Alright guys, I'm finally back with you after a bit of a layoff. We had a bunch of work to get done. First started out farming, then we went into the pool business. and Of course it was really busy like every spring and summer. And we got most of that work behind us now. So we're back to do some filming. One thing I wanted to do today I thought you guys would enjoy is show a lot of these mounts in the house. I know several people have asked me to do that in the past. And a lot of these are on film. so. I want to go around the house and show the different mounts and then maybe show you some footage, some kill shots of some of the ones that we did film. So this should be a fun one. All right, I'll show you my only lock bucks that I have that I saved are these two right here. This is on a farm that I used to live at. I came walking out to go check some trail cams and I could see in a pond there was two sides of two deer floating there. So, you know, I basically knew right away, I'm like, oh, that's gotta be two locked bucks. And sure enough, it was two four-year-old bucks got locked up and got in that water, and I suppose tipped over and they both drowned. So that was a bummer, but pretty cool mount. And then we got a few just Euro mounts here. This one here, you guys probably seen that one. That one is a bow kill on Midwest Whitetail, 2019, I think. That was on my birthday, I remember that one. All right, some of these bucks that are up taller, higher on the walls, we'll just start up here and ones are down lower, we'll talk about downstairs, but these go back a lot of years. Some of these are, let's see, I think this was maybe 2003, 2007. That third one's actually a Michigan buck and that buck might be one that kind of really started the hunger for the whitetails. I mean, I loved hunting anyway, but I shot that buck would have been probably like 96. And of course, for that area of Michigan, that was a really nice buck. I was pretty pumped about that. So that really started the fire burning. And then that's an Iowa buck down there. Rattled him up on the ground. That was a really fun hunt. Uh, next one's a nice solid eight that was 2003, I think. And then on the end there, that's a buck that Paige killed. You guys might remember that buck. That was youth season on Midwest Whitetail. Uh, been 2018 I think so here's one of my favorite things in the house I've got I don't know, probably 20 years or so of pictures up here of some of the bucks I've killed some that Paige has killed that's my dad there and Paige a lot of mine but it's pretty cool to go back and look at these over the years there's a couple, couple pictures you might not even recognize me if you look at this one here that was back in 2004 so just a lot of memories there, it's really cool. I have a lot of people comment that come over to say they wish they would have done that with all their, their buck kills and stuff, but just kind of a neat deal. All right guys, going to the middle row here. This is a mule deer that actually my dad shot that out in Oregon way back in like 1960s. So that was one of the keepsakes that I wanted, you know. He had just a few deer mounts and that was one that I wanted to keep. So that's what that one is. The next one's a turkey foot buck. I think I killed him maybe November 9th, 2009 probably, somewhere in there. Uh, this buck I called Double Beam. That was 2006, uh, first shotgun. Another, that's 2007 there. Nice heavy eight. And then that was 2020 shotgun season. You guys probably seen that one last year. We did a little segment on it. Moving on around, that's the uh, 194. We had that on video. That was maybe one of my best videos. That deer came in, basically walked right underneath a cedar tree that I was in. I was only up like eight or nine feet, so I mean, he was just right there. Really cool hunt. The next one over, the jaw dropper two buck. Now, last year I said that I'd never killed a good buck from November 15th to the 20th, but I got thinking about that and I actually did kill one. It's that one right there. That was November 18th. I got some footage of him walking across the beans headed toward me and then as he got closer, I put the camera away again. Um, moving over to the other side of the fireplace. That was a buck that I killed would have been I think late season maybe around 1st of January I want to say 2017 I think all right staying on the middle row here we've got this buck right here I call the main beam buck 
That was actually the first buck I shot in Iowa. He's probably 30, 35 inches bigger than any deer I killed in Michigan, the first deer I killed here, so I knew I was in for a treat here. Next one over is a buck I killed in Union County. We got that on film, that deer bedded down. We hadn't been there 15 minutes, he came bedded down, maybe 50, 60 yards from us, then he got up. He seen a little buck chasing a doe. He got up, walked right under the tree, and was gonna go harass that little buck, I guess, or the doe, and was able to get him shot. All right, now as we get down to the bottom row, we get into some, the, what I would consider giants. I mean, some of these others are too, but about everything on the bottom row is pretty dang good sized deer. This is one of my biggest here, 196 inch. That deer I killed late season, and he was a mister to me for several years. He would leave every year about September, and then always come back late season. And so I never did figure out where he went, but I know where he ended up, so that was the good news there. I, I did pass him up one year, I think it was January 1st, and I killed a buck over here that I'll show you, but they came out together, a whole group of them, and this was one of them. And so I felt really fortunate to get him the next year, because like I said, he would just leave and then randomly come back around shotgun season, so. Oh, uh, this next drop tine buck, that's one of my favorite deer of all of them. I love the mass he's got, I mean, he's got everything going on. That uh, right antler base, I think, is like seven and three eighths or four eighths, so really massive buck. I almost quit hunting that deer. My brother, he kept prodding me to go hunting because it was, it was getting so boring. You never seen anything. I mean, you never seen the buck. We knew he was there, and uh, you know, lo and behold, that day we'd seen all kinds of deer. We'd seen like twenty some deer, and of course he was in with them. A little buck came out and. This buck was was behind that little guy, so that was one of my one of my favorite hunts, favorite deer. There we have still to this day one of my best typicals. Um, that deer was 2004, November 27th. This goes back to when the trail cams were still 35 millimeters. So, you know, I had a couple of pictures of him, so I knew he was in the area, and I was hunting him hard, and I'd seen him a couple of times. It had been like 30 straight days I was hunting that deer, and finally we were set up on the ground. It was spitting a little bit of rain and really windy, so we were set up on the ground, and he came across a creek crossing, and I was able to make a good shot on him and got him. I remember thinking at that time that that might be the best buck I ever kill, you know. It, to me, that was an absolute giant, and I didn't know if I'd ever top it, but, you know, almost 20 years later, of course, I've got some really good deer since then, so. Uh, this is one from, that was not last year, it been 2020. You guys seen that on a, on a segment we did. That was a bow kill November 11th, maybe 13th, somewhere in there. This is the buck I was telling you about, real heavy buck that I'd shot late season. I think it was January 1st. A whole pile of bucks came out that particular evening, which was shocking to me because We'd been hunting right along about every day and weren't seeing hardly anything, nothing was moving. And I don't know what triggers there were that particular day. There was a little cool down, but it wasn't cold by any means for late season. It was probably mid 30s, upper 30s that day. Rising moon, I remember distinctly. Big pile of bucks came in that day and I ended up shooting this one. He was the oldest one of the group and he was one that really outsmarted me for a long time. I had trouble figuring him out, but finally got him. And then this one here is the picket fence buck. You guys probably remember him. We were after him for a couple of years and finally got him. Of course, I have all the history with him. And moving along to this side over here, you guys probably remember, a lot of you probably remember this buck. That's the crab's buck. We had a nice history on Midwest Whitetail with that buck. Well guys, that's the trophy room. You know, if you go back to my Michigan buck, this room represents probably 25, 26 years of just obsessed whitetail hunting. You know, you got a screw loose kind of whitetail fanatic, you know, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it and it's been fun going back in time and remembering some of these hunts. So hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one.